What is the impact of consuming fish on our health? Fish can be a particularly valuable part of diets because they contain a good amount of omega-3 fatty acids. Some fish, particularly fatty fish, contain more of them, but most fish have some amounts of omega-3 fatty acids in them. Uh, and omega-3 fatty acids are absolutely essential. We've recognized that for a long time. They make up about a quarter of our brain and our nervous system. They influence our ability to react to inflammation in an appropriate way. They help control the heart rhythm in a reg on a, uh, to beat regularly. So we've got to get them from someplace. Uh, we can get omega-3 fatty acids from plant sources. There are different form of omega-3 fatty acids uh, that's often called ALA or alpha-linolenic acid. And our body can convert some of that alpha-linolenic acid into the same omega-3 fatty acids that we get from fish. Uh, whether that's uh, we get enough that way has been a question that uh, an important public health question. We're not quite sure uh, if we can totally get the uh, optimal amount of omega-3 fatty acids from plant sources. It's, it's possible that that's true. The final answer isn't in. But interesting, we don't need to eat tons of fish. One or two servings of fish a week seems to provide about the maximal benefit. So eating a lot more than that doesn't seem to have much additional benefit. But we do see that people who have one or two servings of fish per week uh, do have lower risk of sudden cardiac death, which basically means our heart rhythm suddenly goes into almost a vibration and we drop dead. Not a good thing. How many nutrition studies have you looked at in your life and what are the clear conclusions from all the best, most credible studies? Along with my co-authors, I published about uh, 2,000 papers, mostly related to nutrition, looking at many different aspects of diet, looking at uh, many different disease outcomes. And so there's no simple answer to the question about uh, what is the most important, uh, uh, most reliable uh, information. We have lots of uh, pieces that I think are very strong. Uh, but what we have seen, uh, looking at many uh, different, looking at the issue in many different types of ways that uh, the type of fat is very important in the diet that we are going into this area uh, 40 years ago. There was a lot of belief that just low fat in general was the, way, the direction to go as the data have come in. <clears throat> that's uh, not what we've seen and that's not what other people have seen. The percentage of calories from fat seems to be not very important. We can have healthy low fat diets, we can have healthy higher fat diets, but the type of fat is very important. And we've seen that trans fat is particularly adverse from, from partially hydrogenated vegetable fats. The good thing is that based on our data and some short-term studies, uh, trans fat has been eliminated from the United States. It's actually been illegal since uh, mid-2018. Uh, since mid uh, On the other hand, uh, unsaturated fats, and uh, both polyunsaturated fats and uh, monounsaturated fats from plant sources are beneficial if we're comparing them to carbohydrates or saturated fat. And in particular, polyunsaturated fats are absolutely essential. We've known that. Uh, but we've seen that they're related to lower risk of cardiovascular disease and other outcomes as well. So in general, getting our fats from plant sources that are not partially hydrogenated is, uh, is, has many uh, positive health benefits if we compare that to getting our calories, the same number of calories from saturated fat or f uh, particularly from refined starches and uh, sugar. So uh, the type of fat, very important. Uh, but uh, the total amount of fat in the diet not being very important. We've also seen that the type of carbohydrate is very important. Uh, like fat, it's not the percentage of calories from carbohydrate that makes much difference, but having carbohydrates more in the form of whole grains uh, <coughs> rather than refined grains, uh, definitely keeping sugar intake very low, and of course having some carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables because we get a lot of other micronutrients along with a, with a healthy uh, form of uh, carbohydrate uh, from those foods. So uh, I think uh, among the, the big picture uh, uh, findings uh, that I uh, would say that having healthy types of fat, healthy types of carbohydrate are extremely important. And we also see that the source of protein can make an important difference, mainly from plant sources rather than from animal sources. How do we know which nutrition studies and which publications to trust and which not to? There are, of course, many different kinds of studies. Uh, 
many, uh, and the quality of studies can vary tremendously. Uh, there's no single study that uh, will provide the ultimate truth here. The ideal study is usually impossible to conduct. Uh, in general, we want to look at studies in humans, but a lot of clues come from studies in animals, and uh, we can do things in animal studies that we can't do in humans, of course. And so we can often use animal studies to understand why and how uh, dietary factors are upper, uh, having their effects. But ultimately, we do, we do really want to rely on primarily human studies to make decisions about our own diet, that we respond differently than, than animals do to dietary factors. Uh, in general, we want to have, long, if we're looking at observational studies, epidemiologic studies, we want to look at long-term prospective studies, not studies that in retrospect ask people about what they ate. Those have been shown not to be very reliable. Um, in general, we'd like to have studies that look at, measure diet repeatedly over time because the food supply changes, people's diets change. So uh, it's, it's very valuable and important in long-term studies to not just get uh, dietary information once, but uh, be able to track it over time. Uh, there's also an important role for short-term studies that don't look at disease endpoints, but look at risk factors for diseases. That's an important part of the picture. Uh, ultimately, we don't want to rely just on the long-term observational studies or just on these short-term studies. There are, have been a few randomized trials in humans. Uh, the, the biggest problem is that they're difficult to conduct. And uh, what we've seen in the long-term studies that were meant to be long-term, people don't stick to the diets uh, to which they're assigned. And that can lead to confusing uh, re results. Uh, uh, one of the very few randomized trials that has been done where people did stay on their diets to a large extent was the PREDIMED study done in Spain, which looked at a Mediterranean diet uh, combined with either nuts or extra nuts or extra olive oil versus a low-fat diet. And people on those two forms of the Mediterranean diet, extra, ex more extra virgin olive oil, uh, more nuts, both uh, groups had about a 20 to 25% lower risk of cardiovascular disease compared to the people assigned to the low-fat group. They also had lower rates of diabetes, uh, some uh, better cognitive function, other outcomes as well. Uh, that's one of the very few randomized studies uh, that we've had that was able to look in a reliable way at clinical endpoints like cardiovascular disease and, and cancer risk and diabetes risk. So there's no single study uh, that will give us uh, the perfect, uh, most uh, ultimate truth. Uh, what's important is like uh, perhaps in a jury to look at the weight of evidence from many different sources. And when we, <clears throat> when we get a lot of confirmatory evidence from different sources, that will give us the most reliable information. Is the New York Times a credible source of information? Yeah, the New York Times has been disappointing in many instances. <laughs> Unfortunately, the whole world of journalism uh, is struggling these days to get attention. In part, we've gotten media from all different sources bomb being uh, bombarding people. And every media, including even the New York Times, is struggling to get attention and to stay viable. And in many instances, they've gone for sensationalist headlines that uh, of the type that, oh, scientists got it wrong. There's a new study that shows it was different. Uh, the headlines and the story about uh, really poor quality uh, study done on red meat uh, proclaimed that there was uh, now scientists really were probably wrong. The, the new evidence was uh, showing they were wrong. The, a few years ago, it was the same about obesity. Oh, it's good to be overweight and obese. Despite many much bigger studies, uh, there was a less uh, well done study uh, that did uh, uh, suggest that people who were overweight had lower uh, mortality, but many other uh, bigger, larger studies had, uh, had not shown that. And so that new study, again, the uh, uh, man biting dog kind of story, got the headlines even in the New York Times. So uh, uh, in general, the New York Times is, uh, promotes high quality information, but in many cases, uh, it's been disappointing that they've gone for this, the sensation, that they've gone for the sensationalist headline.